Hey guys, uh, it's Kate again. I got a question on uh, one of the comments on my YouTube channel, uh, which is how do you defend your Adam's class? And so uh, I decided to do a real quick recording. I was doing an Adam's class that day, so I thought, well, I'll do an Adam's class. Uh, what I probably should have included in here also was my pre fork Adam class. I use a lot of those. But here we have is uh, a pedo holly, is what we call a pedo holly. It's got these reverse loop uh, labial bow, uh, mainly used for young kids who don't have their canines in yet. This allows canines to erupt, and uh, we, you can use those reverse loops to control the canines. But it's also a good chance to use uh, Adam's clasp. Adam's clasp are generally used for um, young kids. Uh, who don't have that much tooth crown eruption. So that's why I'm removing some of the uh, gum tissue there. Just because that's the removable tissue that is in the mouth. So when the Adam's clasp engages, it'll push the tissue down just a little bit. Uh, you like to put these the eyelets of the Adam's clasp right on the corner of the teeth. So to find the corner, I usually find the cusp tips and I just draw straight down from there. So there are my two corners. Next is uh, grab a piece of 028 wire. Good length until you get used to bending these a lot. Uh, I used a pretty long piece. I used to measure them uh, depending on the size of the, the molar. But uh, I don't know, what is that, four or five inches? And so I cut it and then I want to find the center of the wire and you'll see me try to zoom back the camera so I can so you can see me trying to find the center of the wire Let's see yeah and I take my trusty pin and I mark on the wire where those corners are and this is going to be your upright bends you're going to make this is going to be the start of your eyelets uh, Adam's class has two eyelets and a bar that goes across the two, all bent from one piece of wire. So I made my marks. And uh, what I use is a bird beak, a serrated bird beak. That means on the square jaw there are grooves, and I like to use those. I have better luck bending wires with those. So I put on the very end, the very last serration, and you're going to make not a 90 degree, but more of a 95, 100 degree bend. Uh, and you're going to bend these to where they form kind of a triangle. Kind of hard for me to bend around this camera that's right at chest level. <laughs> I had to work around it, but that was the best way to get the best shot. So there's my little triangle, and you make sure that they cross at the top because that helps with the final formation. Okay, let me stop it here. Okay, let me freeze frame it here. You see that piece of wire that's the bottom of the triangle? That's going to be the bar of the Adam's clasp. You want that on the left side of your pliers. And the upright part across the flat part of your bird beat. See how I have it there? You're going to bend the wire that's on the tip of your pliers around 180 degrees away from the other wire. And the way, the reason you hold it that way, it already pre-bends these, these eyelets at an angle. You're going to want that in your Adam's clasp. So here we go. We're going to do the other side. You're going to see how I have it loaded in there. Okay, a little freeze frame so you can see how I have it loaded in the plier so you could uh, mimic it yourself. Uh, but you're going to bend this wire the same way, 180 degrees. The other way to match the other one. So remember with the triangle that I made you uh, make before it made these bend at this angle. See that how the, they're bent down at the corners? And so when you put it back on the model, they should be just to the right of your lines. And you can move these lines wherever you want. I'm actually going to shorten or crimp down these eyelets a little bit so that they fit better on this tooth. I did make it a little too wide, but I can adjust it doing this to where it fits. I do like a kind of a wide um, Adam's clasp. I think it grips better when you get closer to the interproximal uh, in between the teeth. 
So here we go, put it back on the model. And now we are going to bend two more bends to make the Adams complete Adams clasp. This is a 90 degree bend straight back. No, we did not get a good shot of this. Here we go. 90 degree bend going straight back. There you go. Put it back on there. And now it's just going to be a series of adjustments. Now it's just like you've got a preformed Adams clasp. Just keep putting it back on those red marks every time, and you're going to uh, find that this part, next part's pretty easy. If you're pretty proficient with wire bending, you're just going to bend it over the uh, occlusal surface on the mesial and over the distal part of that tooth. Okay, from here on out, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to um, work one leg all the way to the finish and then work the other leg, like start with the mesial and then work on the distal. And that way uh, it's easier to set the wire back in the same place every time. But me, I go back and forth. All right, this is where it comes in good to know how long to make your wires. Uh, I used to have actually marks on my bench where I would just do a standard three, four inches and you won't have to cut off as much and waste uh, excess wire. And it makes it a little bit faster. You don't have to, see I'll, I'll cut these twice and so that's just more time. Um, I tended to have a hard time adjusting this just because there's a camera right under my face and I can't see it very well. So just bear with me for a little bit and uh, I'm gonna put the whole uncut version of my wire bending, my adjusting. Now I'm going to, um, I usually make horseshoe-shaped horseshoe, horseshoe -shaped acrylic palettes. So I like these a little on the short side. I don't like them going all the way to the top of the palette. And I like them curving forward. So you'll see me later, I'll, I'll uh, bend it forward. Now, the important thing is always put your Adams clasp in the same spot every time before you make a bend on these tag parts that go into the acrylic. So that way you don't bend it and then it comes back to bite you later because you realize you didn't put it in the right place. There's an example of this here in a little bit and I'll show you. Before we get there, just want to apologize for how dirty my fingernails are. Just realized that, <laughs> man, I need a pedicure. But uh, sorry about that. Hope I didn't distract too much. And uh, probably shouldn't have called attention to it because now that's all you stare at. Kind of like what I'm doing right now <laughs> when I'm recording this. That's all I see. Anyway, I swear I, I cut my fingernails more than this. All right, this is where I discovered <laughs> where I, one of my bends has thrown off one of my eyelets not touching the tooth. I'm trying to get a good shot of it. See that distal eyelet is not touching the tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the distal arm back out and then curve not curve, but bend that bar back in toward the tooth, and that should take care of it. And you can always, when you find you've done something, always try to unbend your last bend, and that usually takes care of it. And so now I'm just going to uh, keep working at this, curving it back around to the teeth, and uh, adapt it, adapting it. I also try to uh, keep the wires about half a millimeter off the palette so that acrylic can get underneath there so you'll see me uh, bend, go back and forth trying to look at the wires against the palette trying to get it to where um, I have sufficient acrylic coverage underneath the wire otherwise 
this will just pull right out of the retainer if it's right up against the stone. Uh, I always like putting these circle tags. You can do whatever you want. You can do zigzag back and forth. I've seen a lot of just a right angle bend forward. Um, it all works as long as there's some sort of mechanical retention. Uh, if it's straight, it's just going to pull straight out like a popsicle stick out of a melted popsicle. So you got to have a little, a little something in there. I usually try to make it my own by putting these circles in there. Um, and you can come up with your own. Uh, that way I know my wire bending. If, if a retainer comes back two years later, I can look at it and go, oh yeah, I bent that. that. So uh, I will... I will uh, uphold my my warranty. Okay, that should just about cover it. Uh, I know this is quick and dirty. Um, if you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments of YouTube. I try to get, I try to get to them all. Um, or if you want to ask me a question directly, you can you can go email me at retainerdesigner.com, or you can go to designerretainer.com, click on or the Ortho Wire podcast link at the top, and uh, go to this episode and uh, you can leave a comment there and uh, I'll leave it for everyone to see. So hope you enjoy. Um, this is ready to go. I just got to bend the other Adams clasp using the same method and uh, we're good to go. Thanks for putting up with me. Subscribe if you want to or come visit me at retainerdesigner.com. Thanks. Happy bending.